Okay, so hello. Uh, so we're going to have a look at getting, capturing panoramic footage, so both a still and a video, um, which is obviously going to be really useful from the perspective of running things on your tetherless VR headset because um, it's going to reduce the amount of polys. You can use it as a sky dome. Uh, so just let's just look at this new feature in 4.23 I think they updated it so make a first person template um, and make sure you've got the starter content included because it doesn't seem to work if you haven't so settings as we've got them here um, and then we'll just create the project my usual VR headset issues um, so what we want to do is we want to check the plugin first if you go to edit uh, plugins uh, and click on panoramic capture under movie capture and then we just want to go back in I've just cut to uh, just gone back in once I've reopened Unreal and it's turned on so that's all good so we need to then they've supplied us uh, Epic has very kindly supplied us with a nice blueprint template so we need to show the engine content and we need to show the plugin content to be able to get access to that so uh, once we've done that we can see panoramic capture content we want to drag in the BP capture so so if I press play now it will start to capture so I'm just gonna cut this um, so it's just gonna use the camera from the first person the camera um, from the first person character settings Okay, so just give it a couple of minutes. Usually it takes a couple of minutes per frame. Um, on I've got a reasonably hefty computer, uh, so we'll just check here, and then uh, we can just check in these folders, and we have got uh, a stereoscopic image that it's created. So it's, as I said, it's used the camera off the first person the character or the first person template. Um, so I think it just looks for the camera in the scene, basically. Uh, so the next thing is if we go into the blueprint uh, we can change the if we change the monoscopic to one let me just show that okay so if you go into the uh, the BP capture blueprint up here uh, and then we can change the SP monoscopic is set at zero by default this is just the blueprint for the template they provided for catching capturing the panel ramic image so sp dot monoscopic changes to one space one I should point out um, and then compile it again and then if we run it what will happen is it will uh, effectively create as a monoscopic instead of a stereoscopic image so we have to press play again to make it uh, do its thing so I'll just cut the, the, the two minutes it normally takes and we can have a look what it's done and there we are so we've got a We've got a monoscopic image now, which is a lot more useful for us. We can just drop it onto a sphere uh, and use it as a background in headset. So if we just look at the message log, just to show it's just to check it is in monoscopic mode. That's not necessary. Um, so let me just quickly pause this again here. So normally this blueprint from the um, BP Capture Sphere goes directly to a screenshot so uh, you can unplug this and plug it back in to uh, panoramic movie so it defaults to th I think it defaults to 50 frames so um, you want to basically take this down to however many frames you feel you need for the the animated sequence you're going to be creating so what's going to happen is it's going to pick up any camera in that scene and then it's going to um, take a panoramic screenshot uh, for each frame so let's just have a look how that works so you might want to you know if you've got quite a uh you might if you've got quite an elaborate sequence you might want to put in uh, quite a lot of frames uh you may need to lock all your frames if you've got part of things like particle effects going on because um it will have issues uh capturing particle effects unless you lock everything to a set frame rate of for instance 60 frames per second that's outside of the scope of this video but basically this is just where you set how many frames you want to capture and this is 30 frames is going to take a long time because it takes on my computer it's, it's taking two to three minutes of frame so going back so don't delete the 
with the um, console command as I just did there. So I've put it at 10 frames there. So what I've done here is I've just added in a cine camera to the scene. So it's going to default to that cine camera. Uh, the game mode, I've changed it to none. And if we go to the project settings, um, we don't want it to uh, default. We want it to default to functional test game mode. Um, I'm not sure whether that's necessary, but uh, I don't want it default into the first person. Um, so really now all it's going to do is just going to default to that camera when I set up the um, the uh, sequence. So what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a level sequence. Um, so I'm going to animate that camera and then we're going to capture the 360 frames that come off that camera because uh, we've set it to 10 frames. So here we are, we just, we've just got a cinematic sequence, go to track, um, just to add the actor that I've got selected. Uh, so it gives you this rather overly complicated cine camera. Uh, sequence. So all I want to do here is adjust the transform. I want to get rid of this uh, command uh, line, which you press tilde to get rid of that. I was fiddling with that. Um, that's where you enter console commands. Uh, so ignore that. But basically, we want the transform. So I want to just put a keyframe at the transform if I can find it. It's somewhere down here. Um, yeah, also I want to just make sure that we're showing the time as seconds. It's a bit more helpful for me to understand how we're uh, doing things in seconds. So about three seconds, uh, I want to, well, let's just set a keyframe at zero first. Uh, so down here we've got the transform. Just so I'm just clicking a keyframe there, just clicking on the little round, on the little circle to put a keyframe in. I'm going to move the camera, and I'm going to put another keyframe in at three seconds. Click it again, so you can see we've got a keyframe down there. So now that animates. So, realistically now, if we uh, press play, oh yeah, so I need to actually run this sequence. So, uh, this is an old sequence that I previously set up when I was fiddling. So, I want to just, uh, let me just pause this. So, so, um, so event begin play up here. This just means it starts as soon as the level starts. It will start playing it. Create level sequence play. It gives you an option to drop down which sequence you want to play. So I'm just playing the sequence fly cam. This is all your basic sequence setup stuff. This is really not to do with the panoramic capture. This is just this is just running sequences, uh, cinematic sequences in Unreal. So. Um, then we move over to play, and um, I've taken a reference to the uh, the fly cam sequence. In fact, I don't think that isn't that's. I need to take a reference to the fly cam sequence sequence and plug it into the play. Okay, and to do that, what I need to do is just grab it out of the world outliner. So get the sequence fly cam, drag it in. I've got a reference now in the blueprint, in the level blueprint. I should point out. Uh, and then I can just delete these all. Yes, yeah, so I want to make sure that these two sequences here are all sequences. Ignore those. I want just to be running the sequence fly cam. So that's kind of set up correctly. Uh, I never, well, I think I've, yeah. I'm not, yeah, okay. I might have overcomplicated that blueprint, but um, it works, so that's fine. <clears throat> okay, so I press play now, um, and then I'm going to cut. Uh, it's going to start capturing the sequence, so I'll just cut out the 10 minutes it takes to uh, render out the frames. So I've got three three frames it's rendered out here. So if I just flick through them, you can see that it's um, captured three uh, animated frames, uh, and uh, you can then drag them into. I'm just deleting some old frames there. I'll just drag those into Premiere Pro, and there we go. It's animating. So you know this this sort of video, you can then uh, take that back in, apply it to a sphere in Unreal, and then you can um, run that as a back, an animated background in the game. Um, so this is the sort of thing that you can do to reduce the amount of polys your headset is using if you've got a very complicated background or any particular effects. Um, and so you uh, so you can basically just output videos or single frames uh, in pan in panoramic capture and then apply them back into uh, your level as a, a sky sphere or sky dome um, and it's quite handy from a polygonal reduction point of view so there you go thanks